Hey everyone, so how was your weekend? Did you go out and touch grass? Maybe see some friends and family, watch a little football? Maybe you had a good time. But I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it probably wasn't as good as this guy right here. This is a creator that goes by the name of Ness Graphics. And on Saturday, he made $2 million in one hour selling this open edition. Now, if you don't know what an open edition is, it's when you sell an NFT and you don't cap how many people can buy into that NFT within a certain period of time. And in this case, uh, you have over 20,000 people that ended up minting it. And funny enough, this came after Nest Graphics had said that he would never do an open edition. Okay, quote, I think OE is definitely out the window. I just don't want to risk over minting. Sure, it's taken away the possibility of making an absolute fuck ton of money, but I care far more about long term than a short term gain. Hmm, that's cat. But come on, who can blame him, okay? And funny enough, maybe not a surprise, this comment itself was then turned into another open edition. And in this case, you had over 3,000 people that ended up minting this one. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now glimpsing into the biggest trend happening in NFTs today. And it's not one that's entirely new, okay? It's been around for a while, but it is one that has recently picked up some insane momentum. I mean, it seems that every single day we have now several new open editions launching and collectors are starting to get tired of the whole thing. But today I'm gonna to talk about why open editions are not going away anytime soon and how I see artists and collectors making money with this trend going forward, as well as a strategy you can start doing today. We're also gonna talk about how there's probably a bubble within a certain kind of open editions happening right now and why I'm personally staying away from them. Now, as I said before, open editions aren't new, okay? It's actually one of the oldest ways of selling digital assets on the internet and there's a good chance that you've bought things through open editions in the past. And I'll give you some examples. These Fortnite skins or really any kind of digital assets that you might have bought in a video game, usually open edition, okay? This code for a digital file of the movie 40 Year Old Virgin, open edition. And these WordPress themes that you can buy here for $39, also open edition. Almost everything on the internet is sold with a theoretically unlimited supply, okay? And the reason we're generally cool with this is because we're not using this as a speculation vehicle, okay? So generally, we don't really care how many other people own the same item that we own. But if you spend any amount of time in the NFT space, you're gonna see that the opposite tends to be true, okay? The most popular model tends to be this hyper-scarce collection where you're selling, you know, typically between two and 10,000 NFTs. And this is partly because one of the value propositions tends to be, you know, joining a community or some kind of online club and if you're just sharing this out to the world you know you tend to lose some of the value but another reason is because people tend to view these collections as speculation vehicles okay and it's a lot easier to pump something that has just a thousand nfts versus one that has a hundred thousand but that all seems to be changing at the moment and we're starting to see more creators adopt open editions as their preferred model and so that begs the question why would a creator give up on all this scarcity in exchange for an open edition. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is because they can make a lot of money doing so, okay? But the reason that they can make a lot of money is because they're targeting an audience that has normally been skipped over by other NFT collections. For example, as we said, a typical NFT will usually put out a very small collection and as a result, if they're using it to fundraise their project, they need to charge a higher amount. And so they're targeting people who can spend more on a single NFT. And Moonbird is a great example where it minted out for 2.5 ETH. And there aren't many people who can or are willing to spend thousands of dollars on a single NFT, but there are a lot of people who would spend 10 or 20 bucks on an NFT that they like, okay? And so the addressable market is now much wider. Now, there are other benefits to this model as well that I put together, and I'm gonna just touch on them briefly because I do think combined, they make this model quite powerful, okay? So why OEs? Well, number one was money, we talked about that. Number two is fewer speculators at lower prices. Now, I know many people won't agree with this, and there definitely are a lot of speculators buying open editions, but generally, I think if the price is really low and you know you're buying into something that has tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of other buyers, the expectation of profit is usually a lot lower, okay? And so the, the people who are buying into this tend to be just fans of the creator, okay? Compare that to, um, you know, someone who's paying thousands of dollars for a single NFT. Now that comes with a lot of baggage and expectations for profit that you might not otherwise get from an open edition. Okay, number three is that it's a lot easier from the artist's perspective, okay? You don't need to come up with 10,000 chimpanzees with you know an assortment of different hats and eye patches. You can get away with just a single design and you don't need any complex smart contracts because you can use something like Manifold and get your open edition up in you know just a few minutes. Okay, number four, you have network effects. So instead of going with just 500 or 5,000 collectors, 
you can now have 50,000 or 500,000 people who are using and showing off your NFT in their galleries. They're using them as PFPs. And so they're acting as marketing. And that is very powerful. Okay, number five, more accessible. So no whitelists or fewer whitelists, fewer insider allocations. If you've been around the NFT space, you know that things got really, really ugly during this whitelist meta. And so now you're giving something that's much more available and opt-in. And number six, it's more PR friendly. If you're a celebrity or someone that has an audience, it's just gonna be much more brand friendly for you to launch something that has a much lower price and is way more accessible as opposed to something that is way more expensive and hyper scarce. So because of all this, it is my humble opinion that the open edition meta is just getting started. And right now it's really just artists. But whenever a big name enters a space, I think they're almost always going to use something with a large supply or even completely open edition as a preferred model. Think about it. You're going to have The Rock, Mr. Beast, Taylor Swift. All these people are eventually going to release tokens and there's no chance that they're going to go with the hyper scarce Lambo model. Like, could you imagine how much hate Taylor Swift would get if she launched, I don't know, 2000 tokens and they were all bought up by crypto speculators? I mean, her fans would absolutely wreck her. All these creators are going to focus on low price and high supply because really what they're just trying to do is get their fans into their token ecosystem, which I think every celebrity is going to care a lot about in the coming decade. And then they'll have their high price items, just like they have VIP tickets at their concerts but it's not going to be the focus of their ecosystem okay it, it really just can't unless they plan to alienate most of their fans so open editions are going to be huge and i want to talk about how collectors can do really well there and what a strategy might look like but first i have to talk about the dark side of open editions because we might be in the middle of that right now you see there's a very specific type of open edition that is popular right now and here's a good example of this okay i don't want to pick on this one specifically but i just want to show how it works but here you see it's an open edition it's priced very cheaply 0 0.0069 eth but it says here you will be able to burn 10 open editions for the new bagner nft collection Okay, so burning 10 will secure you access to a much more limited NFT collection from Bagner. You can also burn it to receive the bag token, whatever that is, and so, so on and so on, yada, yada. So when you see something like that, what you should realize is that even though it is starting as an open edition, people are buying in because they're hoping the supply is going to get reduced. Okay, they're hoping to get access to a much more limited supply very soon so really it's the same model as before okay the same scarcity games and people are buying into this not because they like the r or maybe even the creator but they're just looking for that short-term pump okay and because of all this speculative chasing you're now seeing that a bunch of these open editions are now below mint okay now that people are starting to see that this game is losing uh, steam so generally i'm bearish on these burn heavy drops okay maybe one out of 100 will do well if it's creative but most of them are just getting hit by the same dgens that were minting, you know, derivative PFP six months ago. Okay, now let's talk about the real way to play the open edition meta going forward. Now, when I started paying attention to NFTs a couple of years ago, there was a, another very popular concept being thrown around called social tokens. Okay, and if you actually watch a lot of my earlier videos, which I don't recommend because they're terrible, then you'll see me often say that this is a channel that covers NFTs, and social tokens okay it was another separate wave that people were expecting and the idea was that you could basically make money by finding a creator early on one that you think could grow their platform and then you support them and buy into their ecosystem by buying their tokens okay and as they grow you share some of that upside because demand is going to continue to grow for their collectibles and i think that we're starting to see that again with open editions okay it's just another way to invest in culture and you can get rewarded pretty well as a curator now going back to the example of the taylor swift open edition now would that make sense from an roi perspective well, probably not, right? She's already as big as she can get. You probably have like over a million people mint those tokens. And so there really wouldn't be much upside. In fact, most of the people buying in probably wouldn't have, you know, any expectations. They might just be supporting the artist or looking to get some perks. Kind of similar to someone buying a poster and putting it on their walls for 20 bucks. The real upside comes from finding the next Taylor Swift, okay? And this is where specializing in a certain cultural niche would be really smart. So maybe you're into sneaker designers or fashion designers or music producers or graffiti artists whatever it is now you can develop a you know specialized skill set where you get really good at spotting talent early on and you might be one of the only people who care about their open edition and i think that over the next 12 months more mainstream artists are going to see all the benefits that we laid out earlier 
They're also going to see, you know, fellow artists, their peers making six or seven figures just from people spending, you know, 10, 20 bucks on these open editions. And it's going to seem less speculative than the hyper scarce model that we had before. And so more of them are just going to enter the space. And so my non-financial advice would be to pick an interest that you have, one that seems to have a lot of creators in them, and just start understanding the early signs of, you know, when a creator starts to blow up and gain followers and really come from the perspective of a curator as opposed to just a consumer. And then you watch for announcements as, you know, the first people from that scene start releasing tokens and you start paying attention to any open editions and you start buying the ones you like. Okay, it's not really gonna be a science. You're not making mathematical predictions. That's not possible. But really you're just, you know, buying creators that you think have potential. And even if they don't, at least you learn something and maybe you just got perks from a creator that you actually enjoyed. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now, okay? Where some of the best open editions that came out this year were from artists that are not known to the general public, but which were picked up pretty early on from people who have been paying attention to the art scene. By the way, some alpha here. In the next few days, I'm gonna be putting something out that is gonna help people be able to find open editions pretty early on. And I'm gonna be giving context about you know, the ones that I actually enjoy. So don't forget to subscribe here and on Twitter to be the first ones to hear about that. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you at the next video.